Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me be your tour guide in a score study. I just got a score from Switzerland from Michael Hook, the publisher, uh, the Perlak publisher. Let's see what he sent me. It says Concerto for Symphonic Band by Fridjas Idas. Let's see. He said there is something lovely at po page 44. So let's go there and let me see what he was talking about. And what do we have here? Let me introduce you how uh, I do approach a score. And here we are. Wow, a lot of information. A lot of information. I can't even see what is there. It looks like a satellite image of a city from the sky. Lots of buildings, lots of streets, cars, people. And we don't know <clears throat> what is going on there. We have to go closer to the picture. What is this? Let's take a little closer look at that. What kind of instruments we have here? Uh, let let me see what he calls like this uh, symphonic band. It's a piccolo, flute, oboe, core, and clavier soon. So oh, it is very similar as in the, the symphony orchestras. Very good, but the clarinets are not between the flutes uh, and the, the oboes. Oh, I mean between the oboes and the, the bassoons. Wow, there is the into a clarinet family. Oh, okay. So, and there are another woodwind instrument family, the saxophones. Wow, very interesting. You know, in the symphony orchestra, we have the woodwinds, the brass, and the strings. Very logical, because the woodwinds, brass, uh, the uh, percussion is the wind band. And the strings, this is how we got the symphony orchestra. And uh, the notation preserved that tradition, but here I see different. I still see here the, the beginning, the same as in the symphony orchestra, the flutes, the uh, the uh, oboes, but suddenly the clarinets are coming later, uh, the entire family, and after the saxophones, and don't forget it, the saxophones were invented to cover the sound gap between the wind band and the strings of the symphony orchestra. And now we have here the entire family, and lots of family of instruments, uh, and, and we all know that the instruments were invented to cover the imitate the human voice range and cover it. Uh, this is how the strings were the first instrumental range. But it's interesting that after the saxophones, the horns are coming, same in a symphony orchestra. But now cornets, trumpets, uh, the trombones, euphoniums, tubas, wow, conical and uh, cylindrical brass instruments mixed together uh, from the strings remained the, the string bass for us and the percussion got to the very bottom. Wow, a lot of differences between the symphony orchestra. Plus, you might already notice that much more, they have much, much more uh, transposing instruments we have here than in a symphony orchestra. And let's go back. How can we... We already learned the orchestration. We already learned what, what to expect, what to locate where. Okay, but, but uh, what kind of music is this? What can we find there? And you can see in the high register in the piccolo and the flute, a nice horizontal uh, music, one note at a time, uh, grouped together with uh, the articulation signs, the legato, plus a nice swell starting from piano. And it looks like the first four seconds for the same. So it looks like a symmetric classical phrase. We already had it for centuries, this idea. And then we see the first starts from B flat, second from A flat. And very similar, it looks like a sequence, like a sequential variation that goes back to the Baroque. So even more centuries music history preserved in these two few notes written music in the second half of 20s century very interesting and we can see a big arch like shape of the melody uh, starting like two bars tension and the release there and when we go a little bit lower we can see the same as in the strings violin one two viola might play the melody now we have the clarinet one and the first alto saxophone playing exactly the same music wow so my suggestion is go to the piano and play this is how you will get it this is an idea. There is a, a building up in the, you know, I grew up with the Kodai system, so I learned to sing and side sing. And the, 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 the piano will help everyone to develop these skills. And let, let me show you how. Just let's go to the piano for a second. You do the same and play with me. So we already 
everybody seem to have a melody of the music. Very good. Let's go back and let's keep saying a very traditional, classical, symmetric phrase. What else we have? What kind of music is it? If you have a melody, it might be a nice homophonic musical texture. And it looks like there's a bass line starting on, on the, the bass clarinet, continuing with the bassoon in the upper uh, other side of the sound range, the lowest notes. You know, bass clarinet sounds a major nine lower. Uh, the, the bassoons are sounding wherever they are written in bass clef. They are non-transposing. And we can see that four bars here, four bars there, following the nice uh, classic asymmetric phase structure of the other instruments. And the, 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 the bass clarinet sounds a major nine lower. So these uh, A flat will be a G flat and the, the bassoons are not changing. Wow, very exciting. We are already getting closer to the score and we start to learn a little bit more about it. Let's see how does it sound on the piano. Go there, play the, the left hand the bass line and right hand the melody. I will try to do the same. Let's do it together. Exciting. So we start to learn the score. We learn we have a melody, we have a bass. So if it is homophonic music, it has to be some accompaniment there too. So let's keep rolling down in the score and we locate the horns. Same place as in the symphony orchestra, in the middle, the start with the brass a session of the originally military band that literally plays behind the strings. And we can see that the vibraphone is doing the same ideal as the horns. It's a vertical musical, repeating harmonic notes. So, you know, when we have uh, the more than two notes, we already call as harmony, and we have four, so we can learn that those are seven chords that is very nicely matching with the second half of 20th century identity of the music, and the same notes are arpeggiated on the vibraphone as an accompaniment. What is their function? To help to shine the melody even more. So go to the piano and play it. Uh, right hand the horns, uh, no, right hand the vibraphone, left hand the horns. And when you are done with that, bom bim bom bim bim, bom bim bom bim bim, bom bim bom bim bim, bom bim bom bim bim. And when you are done with that, put it all together. And this is how we will get this beautiful uh, homophonic texture. Let me show you what I learned together with you. So this is how the piano can be your best friend in your score study. This is how I suggest you to study a score. Don't put a recording on first. Open the score and put the recording on and you copy what you heard from the, the, from the recording. I don't suggest that. In that case, you will become a mass product. You will be McDonald's, you will be Coca-Cola, you will be KFC. You don't want to do that. This is why we love to listen to Beethoven 5 with Beethoven. Uh, well, we can't, but uh, the audience probably still remembers somewhere in heaven. But Bernstein and Karajan and uh, Toscanini, they all conduct different ways, different approach, different genetic uh, a code for everyone and we enjoy the differences you know you go to a restaurant here and there and you order the same food and you realize it doesn't taste the same it's same with music if you copy exactly how they did you will sound exactly the same so it doesn't matter who conducts go to the piano communicate with the composer learn from the composer the music directly such as i demonstrated for you how i do it Play the melody, play the bass, play the harmony, if it is a homophonic texture, and you already got the sound picture in your mind, and you know what you want to hear, you know what is there, you know what you want to get out sound of the group that you're working with, symphony orchestra, string ensemble, choir, or a wind band in this case. And the, the, you already learned that the wind band score is much more challenging than a symphony orchestra because a lot of families of instruments 
developed in the, in the last century, one and a half centuries, and the, the, you have to learn the transposition of those old, the horns were in half, so everything sounds a bit lower than it's written. You have to build those skills, the good news. You can build those skills, you just have to practice. I promise just the first 10 years is difficult, after it will be very fluent, like several other skills that you want to build. And when you know what you want to hear, you have to want it and your conducting technique, devices, your hands, your body, your eyes, your facial expression, they will follow your musical directions. So you can show the group you work with how to play the music because you have a conducting will as a conductor. Yeah, several uh, philosophers, uh, philosophers and biologists and space uh, philosophers, they, they state that um, life is nothing else than vibration. Okay, I understand it. Everything is vibrating, moving, uh, and lots of speed are in life. So if uh, life is vibration, music is life. So when you conduct, don't forget that. Music is life. Music makes people better. And make sure you are expressive because expressively organized sound combinations made by human is music. Have fun, enjoy every minute, communicate with the composer, communicate with your musicians and with the audience, and you will have a wonderful experience so you can stop time and forget about mortality and enjoy every minute with making music. Music is one of the best human productions, if it is a human production. Thank you very much for your attention and have a wonderful, wonderful day with my Hungarian accent in your ears. Bye-bye.